I'm Rick Wade, Senior Vice President here at the United States Chamber of Commerce. And what a pleasure it is today to have a good friend of mine joining me, Aisha Bo. Aisha is a aerospace engineer and entrepreneur, and she recently made history aboard Blue Orange's New Shepard 31 flight, an all-female mission that captured the world's attention. I'm so happy to have you join me, Aisha. It's a pleasure to be with you, Rick. Listen, I got to jump right in because we got a lot to talk about. You know, your journey, which is absolutely amazing, from community college to NASA, and now to space is absolutely remarkable. So tell me, what fueled your drive, your motivation, and kind of who is Aisha Bo today? <laughs> you know, I remember being told that I couldn't, I shouldn't, I wouldn't, and I did. For me, I started off as somebody who was in community college who had no desire to pursue math and science. And what I discovered was that I was committed to all these false narratives that I had internalized. And basically anything that anyone told me about myself that was negative, I just believed in it. And so I set a really small goal for myself early in my academic career, and it was just to quiet the noise and focus on the things that I wanted and commit to being totally unrealistic at every turn. And that lack of realism took me from community college to two degrees in aerospace, to working at NASA, and eventually to founding my first company, which I've had for 12 years and has been on the Inc. 5000 list twice and provides government contracting expertise and data science and data analytics and to the space flight which is the latest example of what being unrealistic can do for us all. I refuse to believe that there was no higher that I could go. And so now that I've had an opportunity to see Earth from that view, I'm really challenging everybody who knows me and who hears me and who watches these conversations, what are you not doing because you think you might fail? You know, and gee, and higher heights, and you actually have soared and continue to soar. So you are CEO, and you're right. I mean, recognized by Inc. 5000. I'm curious about how, how does it feel to be even a CEO? We're the world's largest business organization, so we engage CEOs all the time. And what even a great role model you are to be a chief ex executive officer of your own company. What are the challenges and opportunities of running a company? You know, I, I feel like... CEO is an honor. It is not a vanity title. I meet people and when I talk about the business, what I'm really sharing is the reflection of the people who trust me to lead and to guide this organization on a daily basis. And when I decided that I was going to found a company, I never thought, I mean, that's like a reoccurring theme was like, I never thought, I never thought, like, I truly did not think that I would not only build a company, but build a company that's been recognized with a non Perry Award for Excellence in Small Business Contracting or a Higher Vets Medal for our commitment to hiring veterans. What I was focused on was what I wanted to give to the world, what I wanted to leave, which was excellence. I wanted to do two things. I wanted to build an organization that was technically strong and an organization that gives back. And so we built an engineering practice where we took a portion of our profit and we invested it in local communities. And we did it so much, like so much, Rick, that it ended up creating another company. And so then I have two companies that I literally run side by side. One is government services and the other is venture backed education where we make STEM kits. And when people ask me about it, they're like, well, why and how? because education was the vehicle for me to live this amazing reality. But I also wanna demonstrate that the engineers and the scientists of the future, they're gonna be inspired by people like me and you, Rick. They're gonna be inspired by business leaders and individuals who are strong technically, who have passion that is so infectious that they decide that they're gonna share their journey with the world which is exactly what I had an opportunity to do on the most recent Blue Origin flight. Your seat on Blue Origins, all female mission, mm. really made history. 
in your own words, or I mean, what was the purpose of the flight? And, and I'm also, also curious, like, what was space like physically, emotionally, even symbolically? Tell us about that. You know, I appreciate the opportunity to take you beyond the headlines. I signed on to this mission in 2022. That's quite a few years ago. And what I signed on to doing was one world-class research. And so I actually partnered with Winston-Salem, which for those of you who are unfamiliar with the institution, it's a historically black college and they have a leading astrobotany lab. And so we, as part of my flight experiment, we genetically sequence plants in order to validate previous NASA findings, which was a tie not only to the world-class work that Winston-Salem does, but the work that I had done at NASA and realizing that I wanted to continue the legacy of supporting either NASA funded research or research that in some way would tie to NASA. I also gathered biometric data. So I flew a um, bio button and it studied my physiology so that we could learn more about what happens in spaceflight. Specifically, when we talk about women, we have millions and millions of people on this planet, right? but less than 10 African-American women have ever been that high. And we only recently crossed our hundredth woman in space. And so all of this data, it matters. It goes into a repository that is NASA backed and it will become data that people can use to inform how individuals respond to space and um, you know, the suits and things that are needed to keep them safe. And you know, like, when I sit here and when I think about this, one of the things that really sticks with me and I, I almost get emotional kind of talking about was that the science is cool and the research is fun, but it's the legacy. You know, Rick, I had the personal flag, an American flag of astronaut Pete Conrad, the third man to walk on the moon in my flight bag. The Museum of Flight in Seattle went to the exhibit. They got the flag, they packaged it, and they sent it to me. And one of the reasons why that really sticks with me is for me to have the opportunity to carry an American flag into space, but also nod to commercial, to nod to the ability to change the world because you dare to try, is really what I think space and innovation and truly what business is about and where it's going in the future. Yeah, wow. You know, um, we convene a lot of industry leaders here at the U.S. Chamber and one of our largest convening or conferences, summits is the Aerospace Industry Summit. And I always, en I always enjoy going to that because I see how, how, how quickly, how fastly the aerospace industry is evolving. Yeah. I'm curious about what advice do you have uh, for people who want to not just work in space, but kind of shape the future of it because it is moving quickly. It is, and I'm excited by it because you're talking to somebody who I made all of this up, right? I made up the company name, I made up my job, I made up the mission of the business. And at the time that I did that, people were like, oh, there's no way that this could be successful. And now you're literally watching me talk about the story to the entire world. And why that's important to me is I flew to space on a rocket for a company that did not exist when I was working at NASA, right? Like that opportunity was not available when I was at NASA. That is how fast this industry is growing. And one of my mentees, a girl who I had mentored since she was 13 years old, was a rocket engineer on the very same rocket I flew on, Rick. She was 13 when she started with me at NASA, right? She was coming in, she was going to seminars, she was viewing the, you know, the research park, and then she interned at 16. She decided to be an aerospace engineer when she was 18. And so for all the people who are out there wondering if this is their sign to go into aerospace, this is your sign, go into aerospace. It takes everybody and it's there's a beautiful thing happening right now where there's no right background. We need everybody. We need space lawyers 
We need doctors. We need people who are in psychology, right? Long duration space flight. You wanna make sure that you have a good psychologist involved in that, okay? Like we literally need everybody to expand this industry and those who think that they can do. And so you're watching somebody who I bootstrapped the first company, had it for over a decade, and we too were building a space practice. We actually were involved recently in the first international landing of a US rocket. We landed a Falcon 9 in the Bahamas. And people had said to me, it was not capable. It could not have been done. But we did it earlier this year, about 30 days before my flight on Blue Origin. And so for all the companies out there who are interested in space, go into it. And for all of the youth who are wondering if there's room for them, I'm trying to make space for us all. Wow. Listen, got to ask you this final question. You created and scaled businesses. You've helped tens of thousands of, of students access STEM education. You've been to space. What is your next big thing? Where do you go from here? You know, I've helped students, um, but it's not enough. And what I'm focused on is providing a million students with STEM skills, employable skills that they can leverage in the space industry. As part of this mission, I de uh, developed two lessons. One is called Countdown to Launch, and the other is Earth Observer. Both of those are hands-on project-based STEM lessons that align to national learning standards and are right now getting rolled out in schools. We just started a pilot with Fairfax, we are in DC, we're in 17 schools in St. Louis, we're in Tampa, we're in Denver. And what I want to demonstrate is I want to bring space to earth in classrooms, to high schoolers, and give people the skills that they need in a fun and exciting way to be part of the industry. Listen, uh, Aisha, Thank you so much for all that you do for not only being a CEO, but for all that you do across America and the world to inspire so many young kids and so many people to pursue not only what they believe in and their purpose, but to pursue their own American dream. Thank you so much for joining me. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Rick.